Let's talk through some Knights of Titan, true silver-plated vehicles and force weapons with a tier list of the current strongest and weakest grain height units in Warhammer 40k. Hey there and welcome back to Warspets Tactics where today we're talking Grey Knights and in this video I thought we'd do a unit tier list talking through the strongest and weakest units in the index and why I've ranked them where I have. Currently in 40k the Grey Knights are perhaps considered one of the armies that are struggling a bit more than most right now. Army win rates are around about 45% towards the low end of the 40k power spectrum. Occasionally getting some tournament success but not loads and loads. But at least compared with the addition start, they have improved somewhat. They did get a bunch of helpful points cuts, and a few of the most broken things in the game got reined in a little bit, but still I'd rate them as a harder army to win with the most, and perhaps an army with its big movement and redeploy options that really rewards player skill more than most, with the crazy teleport tricks that you can do with them that often might be a path to victory, but make one mistake or get one super bad bit of luck, and it could be game changing or game losing. My guess would be that Games Workshop will probably help them out at least a little bit in the upcoming January balance data slate. It'll be interesting to see what happens then. But for this video, I thought it would be interesting to talk through their strongest and weakest units at the moment, arranged into five tiers of rough power level. As per always with this, tier lists in Warhammer 40k are at least a little bit arbitrary. I'm sure some people will get great value out of things that are ranked a little bit lower, and the things right at the top might not always be the right fit for your army, but Grey Knights maybe aren't one of the ones that have the biggest unit pool in the world, and within that, a few units just really stand out as adding more value than the rest right now, and tend to get played a lot in competitive armies. This tier list is made with a combination of a user vote, plus the units that tend to get played the most at top tournament level, but a few things changed based on my own opinion a little bit as well. In any case, let's talk through each of the units in order, where I'd rank them in army power right now, and why I've put them where I have. First up, starting with tier 5, and here I've chosen to rank the Grey Knights Flyers, basically. I'd say even these aren't exactly unplayable, but just not really chosen to be running optimised lists for the vast majority of people. Out of any of these, I've probably rated the Grey Knight Storm Raven as the single most interesting out of the selection. It is at least somewhat sturdy with its minus 1 damage, and does bring to bear a bunch of interesting enough heavy weapons between its missile launchers, twin last cannons and multi multimelters if you want them. In general though, these aren't super common to be seen in Space Marine army lists, and arguably the Grey Knight's version of them will be directly inferior to that. You can't get big shooting boosts like Oath of Moment in Grey Knights. The other Grey Knight faction rules don't tend to be very vehicle focused at all. And compared with standard Space Marines, Grey Knights can be warping around the board with their deep strike mechanics, so I'd argue there's quite a lot less value in a big transport flyer paying a premium to move units around the board in itself. The Storm Raven's still probably my favourite out of the Grey Knight flyers though. At least it does come with some tank busting heavy weapons, which I guess could at least contribute to mitigating the weakness of the faction that's not usually very good at taking down hard targets like vehicles or monsters. I've also chosen to rank the Thunderhawk gunship here at 805 points, a bit too much to invest in any one vehicle really, particularly one that can't do objectives. Its toughness isn't really all that great for the cost as well when it's going to be an enormous chunk of your army. Otherwise, the Stormhawk and the Storm Talon are just both think are overcosted for what they bring. The Stormhawk is 160 points and the Storm Talon is 170. Both get some assault cannon shots, plus some other harder hitting weapons that can either get better against ground things for the Storm Talon or flying things for the Stormhawk. But I'd argue that neither their damage nor defence is particularly standout. They're definitely paying a big premium for moving around the board so quickly. Again, lacking things like access to Oath of Moment or any good synergies with vehicle type units in the Grey Knight army, I'd say that these guys aren't really the most exciting to be running. Moving on to tier 4, I feel like these guys have a bit more draw to them, but are in general outclassed by other things within the index. Again, kind of rarely seen in more optimised armies, but maybe have just at least a little bit more draw and interest to them. First up, we've got the Grey Knight Rhinos and Razorbacks. The Rhino is 75 points and the Razorback is 85. And again, I feel like these guys' main weakness is that Grey Knight units can teleport around the board and get really good movement that way, so it really seems to be the best idea to have units that are delivered by transports and pay a big points premium for that, rather than just pay points for more units on the board that could teleport around. I don't really think that either the Razorback or the Rhino are particularly unusable. You could use them for purgation squads or purifiers maybe. The wound rerolls for the Razorback could be nice with the purgation I suppose. And Rhinos are usable enough in most factions, just being able to move fairly fast, are fairly tough to deliver units, and then are just an annoying unit that could get in the way of enemies. 
I feel like with the Grey Knights, most efficient units often being some of the Terminators these days as well, maybe they get a little bit less of a look in for that reason, unable to cart around what's normally the core of the army. Next up, in tier 4 I've also chosen to rank the Nemesis Dread Knight, 185 points. This guy's a medium toughness walker with a 2 plus save and a good invulnerable save, and it does move quite fast due to its advance and damage special rules which work quite well with the current detachment rule. Despite the points decrease it got from when the faction dropped though, it's still considered kind of over costed for what it does, lacking the raw numbers to go toe to toe with enemy heavies and not particularly exciting either in terms of damage output or defence. I feel like in reality it's maybe not as far from being strong as some people might claim, another solid enough points cut could make it genuinely quite interesting, but until then I feel like a lot of Grey Knights players might be leaving them on the shelf. I'd say perhaps the most disappointing thing with the Dread Knight is that it's just not particularly good at taking down enemy hard targets, things that in theory you'd think that it should be able to be good against. It's supposed to help the Grey Knights go toe to toe with greater demons and things, and with the damage profiles of its weapons at the moment, it's just not really all that good at killing tanks and monsters reliably. Fingers crossed for a points cut for this when the next balance update comes around. Next up we've got the Land Raider Banisher for 255 points. This is a Forge World Grey Knight unit with big heavy incinerators on the Sponsons. It does have some pretty potent overwatch with 46 strength 6 AP1 attacks coming out of them. Plus a slightly scarier Psy Cannon that beats the standard Land Raiders heavy bolters. But maybe not by all that much. In general I feel like this one is maybe kind of badly balanced versus the other Land Raider variants. And it probably needs to be a bit cheaper. It's almost the same cost as the Land Raider Redeemer, and the Flamestorm Cannons that that gets are just far more dangerous with their damage too, and having kind of similar numbers of shots still. And overall, if you have one of these, I'd be kind of tempted to run it with the Redeemer rules, as it's just a bit more general purpose. Next up for Flavors of Grey Knight Armor, we have the Venerable Dreadnought for 155 points. This one's got a pretty similar stat line to other Dreadnoughts out there. Able to mount one big gun and a fist that's kind of punchy in melee with a whole bunch of strength 12 and damage 3 attacks. In general dreadnoughts in 40k often seem to be costed based on the special rule boosts that they can bring. This one has wisdom of the ancients to give nearby infantry reroll ones to hit and wound. That damage boost for infantry genuinely is quite a good one. That's going to equate to something like a 35% increase in damage which could be pretty meaningful with terminators. It does feel like it's kind of hard to coordinate those buffs though. Other infantry can be teleporting around all over the place. This guy's got to very slowly march up the board. And I feel like you need to get some really good use out of both its boosting rule plus its damage and defense to just about justify that cost at 155 points. Even with its 2 plus save, it is really not that tough for the cost at all. Anything with high strength and high AP is going to kill this even more easily than most vehicles. And I feel like it just is a bit too many points to warrant bringing that boost along for nearby infantry. Next up for 50 points we've got the Grey Knight Servitors, a very cheap placeholder unit that could do secondary objectives and things, plus could fire off a few random multi-melter shots, every so often they might actually do some damage. In general though if you want cheap placeholder units you're probably better off going for the Agents of the Imperium, particularly the Inquisitorial Henchmen for 40 points fill their role but better really I think. They're tougher to kill with their two wounds and actually bring a bit of objective control to the table, meaning that you could have them hold down a home field point while the other Grey Knights go off to play, or if you just wanted the units to turn up out of strategic reserve to do secondary objectives or things, then they could do that for a cheaper points cost. It seems likely that when their codex rolls around, these guys probably get removed as well, as they were for the standard Space Marine codex. Finally for tier 4, I've chosen to rank the Brotherhood Tech Marine here as well. He's really quite cheap at 60 points, for a plus 1 to hit for a vehicle unit, plus some healing. I feel like for what he does he really isn't that bad a deal at 60 points if he did want to support some heavy armour, but unfortunately for most of the Grey Knights choices at the moment they're just not really the heart of the army. The focus almost always tends to be on the infantry, though I guess perhaps if Mass Dread Knight suddenly became the way to play Grey Knights again, he might have a little bit more of a look in. Even then he might have at least some trouble keeping up with his charges given that the Dread Knights can advance and attack. He would have to think about positioning at least a little bit carefully. Moving on, we come to Tier 3, where I've chosen to rank a couple of the Grey Knight infantry units, Land Raiders, the Grandmaster Dread Knight, and a whole bunch of the character units that are maybe a little bit less played than most. Starting out, and perhaps towards the top of this section, are the Grey Knight's Interceptor Squad, 135 points for 5 of these extra teleport Grey Knights, or 270 for 10. For that, you get some Strike Marine bodies that get the special rule to be able to move, shoot, move and also teleport around more rapidly on the board as well, moving 12 inches before that. 
move shoot remover day is quite a nice special rule means that they could potentially be threatening and then hide away from enemy reprisals giving you yet more teleport shenanigans to do so alongside things like the sigil of exigence or mist of Dimos. currently at the moment though it seems that it's not quite enough to sell them on mass to people too much they are a bit pricier than the strike squad and purifiers both of which have some pretty good draws to them and with their teleportation things, they can't get attached characters. I still rank them towards the top of this section though, maybe a tier 2 if I was generous. Basically strike marine bodies that move a lot faster, and could threaten some long charges while they're on the board. Next up, I've also chosen to rank the Purgation Squad in here. Certainly prior to the points updates, I would have ranked them far lower, but I feel like for 135 points, they genuinely aren't bad for a small unit of shooting Grey Knights. For competitive lists, I feel like the most common configuration I've seen them is a squad of five of them with four incinerators, extra heavy flamers jumping out of the warp to burn down enemy infantry, and then providing some very nasty overwatch threat after that if they're in range of an objective. Otherwise, I feel like the side cannons aren't bad and maybe make a bit better use of their special rule to ignore line of sight, or at least if at least one more Grey Knight unit can see their targets. The incinerators aren't bad for that though, means they could hit an enemy unit in cover and they don't care about either the minus one to hit or the cover due to the incinerators ignoring it. Could be quite fun for burning out some troops that think that they're safe hidden in the corner of a ruin or something. Overall I'd rate them as usable but niche. You probably don't want to go too heavy on them given that Grey Knights generally tend to be stronger against infantry compared with heavy vehicles in the first place and that having more anti-infantry maybe isn't the biggest niche that they need to fill. They're also competing against purifiers with Castell and Crow, which are very good. Next up, we come to the other Grey Knight Land Raider variants. I feel like compared with the other transports, there's a bit more of an argument for these guys. 230 points for the Crusader, 240 for the Godhammer with the Last Cannons, or 260 with the Redeemer with its scary Overwatch Flamestorms. As with other Space Marine chapters, I feel like these are really quite playable right now. Fairly tough for the cost, particularly with True Silver Armor if you used it. Really quite dangerous and can push a dangerous unit up the board and into melee without too much difficulty, a bit more reliable delivery into combat compared with trying to do a teleport assault and then make a 9 inch charge. I feel like while you can have loads of units in teleport assault, you need at least some things to have some weight on the board, and the Lamb Raider isn't actually maybe the worst anchor to a list. I'd probably be most tempted either for the Lamb Raider Redeemer with its big overwatch, or the standard one to bring you a little bit more ranged anti-tank, Next up, I've chosen to rank the Grandmaster and Nemesis Dread Knight a little bit higher than the regular Dread Knight, as I feel like he perhaps is a bit more focused in trying to solve one of the problems that Grey Knight has, taking down really big heavy hitters, give him a demon hammer and trigger his four rerolls for hit wounds and damage, and he does put out some very impressive numbers against most standard enemy vehicles. Otherwise, as a big scary unit, he could be an interesting target for enhancements, maybe first to the fray to give him better chances to make charges out of deep strike if you were going that way. I think his main issue is that he's not really all that tough for the cost. It's harder to get into combat than the standard Dread Knights due to not having their advance and damage type rules. Still probably feels a little bit overcosted to be truly stand out though. Otherwise here I've also chosen to rank a whole bunch of Grey Knights characters that I think are kind of fine, but are up against some tough competition with the things that have ranked higher up. Grandmaster Voldus I think is perhaps one of the more interesting ones, giving you minus 1 to hit for the unit, then some good melee punch with strength 10 and damage 3, not awful for 95 points, and he can do a potentially quite fun punch of mortal wounds in melee as well, particularly stand out against demons. Otherwise the standard Grandmaster allows you to ignore modifiers on the squad, situational but helpful enough, he also gives you a once per game free battle tactic stratagem as well, could be okay for a command point reroll to try and make a key charge perhaps, or otherwise I suppose you could use it for Radiant Strike, for Devastating Wound Melee Damage, or Death from the Warp for a plus one to hit with Shooting. The Brother Captain is just generally fairly fighty, and he gives you sustained hits for the unit, plus is personally fairly fighty with built-in reroll wound rolls for his psychic attacks. Otherwise the Brotherhood Chaplain gives you a plus one to wound and a Battleshock debuff for 75 points. The plus one to wound is great for making Terminators more general purpose and punch off against tough stuff, Really quite a nice boost to have. The Brotherhood Champion is 80 points and can lead the Strike Marines and he has Fights First and some precision melee against characters. Fights First is quite a nice draw for units defending objectives, means that you'll get to hit them with a whole bunch of force weapon attacks before they get to strike and that could mean that they're basically unchargeable for certain units that they might get wiped out first. Finally, Brother Captain Stern is 90 points for critical wounds dealing mortal wounds for his unit 
Plus, he gets a personal chance to resurrect on death. Hopefully that should give him one last turn of action to be able to take down some more enemies before he goes. Overall, between all these, I feel like they're relatively well balanced against each other. If you've got a specific plan for a unit, like fights first to defend a midfield objective, or plus one to wounds to make Terminator's very general purpose damage output, I'd say pretty much most of them are usable, though I would rate them as not quite a standout as the other three options that I've not talked about that tend to get by far the most play in competitive lists. Moving on to tier 2, here are the units that are considered really quite strong as Grey Knight units in game, frequently making appearances in competitive armies, but still maybe not quite the absolute most auto include options out of anything. First up we've got the Paladin squad at 225 points for 5 or 450 for 10. For the central damage and defence units for the Grey Knight army it seems to be the Terminators that are taking the forefront at the moment, and both these and the Brotherhood Terminator squad I think are very good and really quite credible to use for that. The Paladins get to hit on a 2 plus with their attacks, and they also get a minus 1 to wound special rule, so they're basically the Grey Knight Terminators that are extra extra tough. Terminators work about as good as it gets with the core rules for the faction, most of the stratagems are really relevant on them, and as it's affecting a big scary fighty unit, they're generally quite efficient to use on them as well, as opposed to say a smaller squad of say 5 of the power armoured equivalents. Out of the two I'd be a bit more tempted by the standard Brotherhood Terminators, they seem to be more common in competitive lists, and they do have their own big advantages, maybe focusing a little bit more on damage, but their healer model special rule is rather good as well. If you want to run Paladins though, I feel like they're absolutely fine, the minus one to wound rule does mean that they're extraordinarily tanky. Next up I've chosen to rank the Grey Knight Strike Squad here, the cheapest power armoured Grey Knights at 125 points for 5 of them, or 250 for 10. They get higher objective control than most things with OC2. The scout special rule if you want to have them move toward midfield objectives early on, and perhaps the best draw to them is the sticky objectives type special rule, maybe quite nice for having them start on a home field objective turn 1, mark that so your opponent actually needs to control it if they ever want to take it away from you, and then perhaps go teleporting around elsewhere if they do wind up engaging the enemy later on. They're fairly efficient for power armoured bodies, seeing as they're the cheapest ones for the same weapons as, say, the Interceptors. I'd say I'd more want to use them in a supporting role to the Terminators having the main forefront of the army, though. They don't have quite as good character access, which is a bit of a downside. Still, though, I do think that they're really quite usable right now. Next up is the Purifier Squad, 130 points for 5 of them, or 260 per 10. These are the white helmeted elites that get their purifying flame special rule. In addition to their regular attacks, that's a single small shot at strength 4 but anti-infantry 2 plus, stacking a whole bunch of extra AP minus 1 damage on most enemy infantry units. They also get a damage boost rule built in as well. If the squad's less than full strength, they get a plus 1 to hit, and if they're below half strength, they also get a plus 1 to wound as well. So if you have a few of these cling to life as the squad gets mostly wiped out, the last few could hit the enemy perhaps surprisingly hard. Compared with the Terminators, they're not quite as resilient to enemy firepower though. They're quite nice with the drop outside of 3 inches special rule and mists of Dimos to get all that firepower really quite close up and take out a bunch of the enemy's backfield. And they're extra nice with Castell and Crow as well, who's really quite an efficient leader for them. Speaking of which, Castell and Crow with his nice new recently revamped model is 75 points. It's really quite a cheap character to add to the Purify squad, and his big thing is to add plus one attack to their Purifying Flames, so say a 10-man Purify squad will be spitting out 20 attacks with Anti-Infantry 2 plus and AP 1, plus all their Storm Bolters and their special weapons. I feel like that's all he needs to do to be justified within a unit of them, and then he also has some fairly good melee with Precision as well to add to the squad's threat. That'd be extra nice if you did get the plus one to wound buff to trigger on him just by the opponent not quite wiping out the unit at some point. Definitely makes the last few purifiers in a unit just extra dangerous. Finally though, and getting on to the best stuff of the index, in pride of place at the moment I'd rate the Grey Knights Brotherhood Terminator squad, 210 points per five of them or 420 per 10. As mentioned, these guys seem to be the more favoured Terminator units to build around compared with the Paladins, Generally people valuing the lethal hits on the charge that they get, plus the big apothecary for reviving models, to be slightly higher value than the hitting on a 2 plus and the minus 1 to wound. Compared with the power armoured grey knights, as with the paladins, they get a really good character choice, including the other two that are ranked here in tier 1, but also things like the chaplain. Their banners make them resistant to objective control being degraded from battle shock, and also might help them outscore the enemy as well. 
and that lethal hit special reward I do think is very nice, allowing them to punch up against tougher stuff a lot better than the Paladins can. The majority of competitive grain art lists at the moment do tend to revolve around at least a couple of units of these, and sometimes more. Otherwise though, for the best grain art characters, the Brotherhood Librarian is certainly a bit of a staple. 100 points for a grain art psyker. His main thing to bring to the table is the very direct and effective Vortex of Doom. Cast on a 2 plus to typically spit out 2d3 mortal wounds against one enemy unit at 18 inches. It's not technically a shooting attack either, which does have some advantages with when you declare it, or taking out things like lone operatives. It does have a bit of a big swing to it as well. On a roll of a 6 you can get some massive damage output with 2d6 mortal wounds, which is ridiculously dangerous, but on a 1 it can rebound on you and do mortal wounds to your own unit if you're unlucky. Still though, seems like players are happy enough to take this risk and it does function most of the time. Perhaps one of the most reliable ways that Grey Knights have to get damage against heavy targets at range and you'll be able to fire him to full effect even after he's come out of Deep Strike or Teleport Assault. Otherwise he does contribute a little bit to the squad's melee and also has a single strength 6 damage 3 attack that can be precision if it makes sense to. It's generally quite a solid choice to head up Brotherhood Terminators or Paladins, though I have seen occasional people running him just completely solo as a disruption unit, potentially nice for jumping into the enemy backfield to do secondary objectives, while also blowing up a bunch of enemy infantry. Finally, last but by no means least, is the Supreme Grandmaster himself. Cloudor Drago of the Grey Knights is just a great deal for his points cost right now. 125 points for another Terminator armed character. I'd say maybe his single biggest draw is his big movement that he can get out of Deep Strike or Teleport Assault. Once per game he gets a 3 inch move after you've dropped, which means that you should be getting a 6 inch charge on whatever the Terminator squad that he's leading wants to take out. That's very likely to succeed just outright, though if you bodged a command point reroll for that, the odds go very high indeed. Beyond that he gets strong melee with 6 attacks at Strength 8, AP 4 and Damage 3. That's definitely going to add to the threat of a Terminator unit with higher strength, higher AP and higher damage. Definitely helps them out against tougher stuff. He shields his squad against mortal wounds with a 4 plus fail no pain. He's fairly sturdy in his own right with 7 wounds and has some okay shooting against space marine profiles with his scourging attack. Overall though I'd say the main draws are getting the squad in close and then proceeding to hit the enemy quite hard when he gets there. Between that never mind the other stuff I think he's a really good deal all around. He does tend to crop up in a lot of the most competitive armies out there. With the cream of the Terminator lineup talked about though, that brings us to the end of this Grey Knights tier list. Let me know your thoughts on the rankings and the factions in general down in the comments below. What's been doing well for you so far in Grey Knight armies in 10th edition 40k? If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics. I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I do tend to post new ones most days, so feel free to check back for more. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep all these coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.